going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. Can you stay categorical? In today's day and age, there's a fairly obvious disagreeance between the media and the quote unquote truth. It isn't that news sites are always seeking to attack the truth, although I mean sometimes they are, but in most cases they're not. The thing is that news outlets tend to come with an agenda. Think The Wizard of Oz, but shadier and with reporters instead of magic. In some cases, journalists just don't do as much research as they should. And how can they with everyone fighting to be the first one to break the story open? Given all of this, it comes as no surprise that a lot of us, especially the younger generation, are pretty hesitant to trust news sources. So how did over 6 million people decide to trust a YouTuber in his 30s to give them the news? Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you had a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Buckle up. And the first thing that we're going to talk about today is this Chris Pratt situation because internet, you made the Avengers actually assemble. And so that first story we're going to talk about today is about a family that is gone. Philip DeFranco is one of YouTube's most recognizable personalities. He joined YouTube back in 2006 when it was first beginning to grow popularity. And since then, he slowly built his very own media empire. This vlogger and media personality has grown a steady following over the years and has covered a full stream of relevant topics. In some videos, he talks about celebrity scandals, in others, he breaks down hard hitting news stories. So the question is, what makes Phil so compelling and why do people trust him so much? The answer, because he isn't an actual news source. Philip DeFranco isn't a journalist. While he did spend some time in college, he didn't come out with a degree that would establish any kind of credibility. He's truly just some guy with opinions. Unlike a lot of actual journalists, DeFranco doesn't speed to the finish line. He learns about a topic, researches it, and then brings us everything that he knows. No agenda, no bias, no scheme. Just news and an opinion. And you know what? People love him for it. One of the most obvious ways that Phil makes his audience trust him is simply by being Philip DeFranco. Not as a brand, but as a person. When you watch his videos, you don't feel like you're being scanned by some talking head. Phil might have a big personality, but he's almost painfully relatable. While journalists are known for presenting their best reporter face, DeFranco talks like he's just one of your friends spilling the tea. You have a lot of people who will look to a person in a position of power, not utilizing it and go, oh, well that says that they're kind of okay with the status quo, what's happening, it is a show of support. Though, of course, whatever that person actually stands for is not known because they may be doing a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. And how could people not love someone who's obviously just another person doing their best? If you're looking to establish credibility, one of the best things that you can do is show where others are failing to be credible. Watching any of DeFranco's deep dives will show you that he's openly critical of the media. He has called out several different publications in his videos, criticizing them for lack of journalistic integrity or even outright stupidity. When, when the Wall Street Journal knocks on Felix's door after they, they didn't apparently approach him uh, for the original story and they're like, hey, we wanna give you a platform to tell your story. It's like, Ooh. it's the problem with a lot of media is they're, they're overextending. Do your research. I'm a guy on the internet. You're supposed to be a journalist. And so to these mainstream outlets that are trying to cover this, I want you to know you're, you're overextending. You're While big brands might not care about the opinions of a YouTuber, they should. DeFranco's audience frequently chooses him over other media sources because he points out just how shady many of today's news outlets are. A lot of us assume that when a major news network decides to report on a story, they'll actually do their research. But in some cases, this really isn't true. Why would a news source care about being right when they already got the money from producing a half-researched article? There's literally no incentive. DeFranco openly expresses his own distaste for this and does what everyone should do. He checks the facts. Instead of reading a news report and taking it as gospel, he looks for the source material and presents the facts. DeFranco always points out when false information is circling, even if it conflicts with his personal beliefs. This makes it so much easier to trust him because it shows that he's interested in the truth and not just swaying his followers. It just ain't so. Psychologists have shown that when people associate almost exclusively with those who agree with them, they suffer from groupthink and confirmation bias and lose their ability to see events clearly. The majority of news sources are funded to push an agenda. And the truth is that most of us are more interested in the reaffirmation of our own beliefs than the actual truth. Let's face it, it's nice to be right, so getting your news from someone who always tells you that you chose the right side and that the other guys are bad, well, that's pretty effective. At least that's how it's been for a long time, 
but things are changing. People don't just want any news story. They want the truth. It's kind of hilarious that they can get more real news from a guy on the internet who's known for dishing out stories on YouTuber scandals. Most of us have heard DeFranco explain his opinions on his show. He's actually a pretty opinionated person, all things considered. But he does this crazy thing where he doesn't try to push his own agenda. He might share his opinion, but he never shares them as a matter of fact. Instead, he provides us with the facts and then offers his opinion on them. For those of you who haven't been in the debate world, crafting an effective argument actually comes with some pretty specific rules. The biggest is that a solid argument should always have a concession. A concession is the point in your argument where you acknowledge that the other side might have a good point. And it's what opens a dialogue instead of just screaming, no, you're wrong, I'm right. Surprisingly, it's actually a pretty good way to win a debate. That's the difference between modern news sources and DeFranco. Modern news sources claim that they were right from the beginning, while DeFranco admits when he's wrong. More importantly, he admits when there's more to the story. He doesn't just refuse to give time to get counterarguments to his points. Instead, he embraces them and explains when he can see where they're coming from. His goal is never to be right or wrong, it's to just tell the truth. In line with the need for a concession, DeFranco is known for sharing all sides of an argument. He doesn't just walk in and say, here's my opinion and here's how I support it, thanks, bye. Instead, he presents arguments from all sides and explains his rationale behind them. This is crucial because it doesn't force the audience to agree with him. While they might not like his opinion every time, chances are that their own opinions will be well represented within the video as well. Weird. But if we can't talk about things, we can't disagree about something and not and hate each other after, I mean, I don't know what we're trying to do. DeFranco's charm comes from a place that even if he really, really doesn't like you, he still thinks you deserve to have a voice. Even when it comes to people who most of us would agree are dumb or uninformed for today's show. On today's video, I've removed all advertising. I have rescheduled a sponsor that was originally scheduled today, and that's because I don't want to talk about a story today and have it in any way seem like I'm exploiting the situation. And I know a lot of you- At some point, everyone finds out that someone is lying or misrepresenting information and has to ask themselves, why? The truth is that a lot of the time, if you see someone who's pushing an agenda, you can link it back to money. Follow the money is an old saying that is truer now than ever, and DeFranco is vocal about it. Not only does he acknowledge when people are blatantly pushing an agenda, but he actually puts his money where his mouth is. Even though DeFranco's entire livelihood is linked to making YouTube videos, he's actually been known to pull the plug on his own monetary gain for certain topics. Why? Because he doesn't want to capitalize on controversy. So obviously the money is fantastic. The money yeah. is an enabler and I will, I will not talk on money. Um, but for me, it is, it is really what we're putting out there. It's just, especially now, it's just so important to talk about what's happening because everyone's so confused and frustrated. Um, and so I'm, that's one of the reasons I left Maker early days. It was, it was business first, mm. everything else second. My bank account would look slightly different, but I'm so glad personally as far as uh, the work and what I'm doing that I, I decided that I want to do it my way. That Capitalizing on controversy is something that most media sources love to do. There's a reason why news networks love posting ethically questionable videos. It sells. They get a ton of traffic and make a ridiculous amount of money for showing us someone else's misfortune. Unlike the media, DeFranco has been known to draw the line when he touches on topics that he knows he shouldn't be profiting from. He actively chooses to demonetize his own videos, and that alone gives him integrity that most news sources don't have the conversation. People find us for the first time because of the shareability um, and the relatability, and then I, f I feel like a lot of them stay because of the personality. I wanted to talk about the news because I just wanted to talk to someone about everything that was happening, right? That's, it's, I'm, I've always been like a very, like a loner, kind of loser type, stuck to myself. Uh, At the end of the day, there's a million different reasons why people trust DeFranco. His candid manner of speaking and overall integrity make him a source that over 6 million subscribers can gladly commit to. There's not a lot of places where people can talk about things that are home and alien and left and right and domestic and international and we can have a conversation rather than people telling you what the truth is. And